Hello. Hey everybody, welcome to Happy Life Results Book Reading Group Q&A Live. Number 23. 23. Um, so we have a couple of announcements and then some questions that have been submitted. If you have any questions, any comments, anything, if you're watching us, say hey so we can see you yeah, on here. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't let us know if you're there, so yeah. say hi. So give us a holler. Um, just really quick announcements. Uh, one thing, Stacy and I just this week produced a video for a conference that's happening in the next couple weeks, and it's a it's a mega success conference for entrepreneurs and um, content creators and wealthy people, all that kind of thing. Anyway, we we made a course. Uh, I mean, a quick. You, you tell them. What, what do yeah. we do? <laughs> so we created a video. We Originally, we were going to be on stage in front of more than 2,000 people, but because of COVID, it's being done in video format. Yeah. So we created the video, and we asked my group, it, so any of you who are on the Stacy page, I asked for feedback on the on the apparel and so people were so amazing to get back to me like instant the same day yes. thank you because we were under a, a crunch deadline. to get it done so any of you who were aware of that or any of you who responded thank you so much and we appreciate it so much yeah. and actually this segues into our next announcement which is we're creating a relationship course and it's going to be in the beta phase for the next yep so we're we're looking for people who want to beta test it want to go through it and uh get give it give us a chance to test drive some of the concepts and things and see how they relate to you and you could get uh get in there f because of your participation we will make it really affordable, really easy, because we really want your feedback. We really want... So anyway, we'll, we'll make more announcements when we get there. This is just kind of a pre-announcement yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. And, and share in the excitement, because it's been... Um, a lot of people have been asking for it. <laughs> yeah, and we've been dragging our feet to make it. There we go. Oh, hi, Simon. Hi, yes. Simon. Hey, buddy. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah, we've been we've been dragging our feet. It's been something we've we've had on the drawing board for a long time. So we're finally putting it together. This. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other announcements? Anything else you wanted to? I think we're ready for okay, our questions. Okay. First question. All right. The first question has to do with what is up, and how does is it, how does it relate to happiness? And how is it completely different? Yes, yes. <laughs> this is such a good question because I think almost everyone in Up Mastery has asked this question in some form. Yeah. And so it's very applicable to all of you who are on your journey of Up Mastery. All right, so when we talk about Up, we're talking about the optimal state to get the results that you want. <laughs> Which that's very different than, especially if your definition of happiness is being content. Being content means you don't need, you don't want, you don't, you just, you know, right exactly where I'm at, I'm just gonna stay here. Yes. <laughs> but if you're trying to go for results, you're trying to, results usually mean a change, you're trying to get a change, you're talking about being in an optimal state for something different than yeah. you have now. Yes, going after something that you don't already have, and so it's the optimal state to go after those results. And what's interesting is a lot of people's definition of happiness means that you kind of stay away from the things that could quote unquote mess with your happiness. Mm -hmm. So if you think happiness is yeah. external, externally derived, then happiness is kind of a delicate thing that that people are like, you can't be happy all of the time. Yeah, and if you think of from the outside, it, the outside in approach, if you have to get the things in place to make you happy, if you are happy, it's like, Nobody touch anything. Yes. I'm happy at the moment. If you if you bump anything, I might lose it. Yes. So So definitely from that definition you can't be happy all of the time. Yeah. That it's not possible. Yeah. So if you're doing an inside out approach and if you're not going for just happiness, especially that kind of happiness, right. if you're going for I want the optimal state for the results in life that I want then you're talking about something totally different. But what's really interesting about it is, why do people want results in life usually? What are they going for? They're, they're hoping to get some change inside as well as outside. It's not yeah. just the outside yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, so let, let's say they want a new friend. They want more friends. 
Do they want more friends so that when they look around they see other faces? Or do they want more friends because they think it will somehow impact their the inside. Their inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll feel something when they have more friends, yes. right? That's why they want more friends. Why do they want something different in the relationship? It's it's not so that they can point to and say, hey, that thing is different in my relationship now. It's so they can feel something. Yes. So what's interesting about what you're talking about is creating that internal state in order to change the outside stuff. So then you start with... Yes. Yes. Where they were trying to get to. That internal state is what will propel you. It will, it will enable you to get the results that you want. <laughs> it's the very best way to get the results that you want. So it's like, I want these results. I want the change. So I'll have the most optimal internal state. And that will drive me forward with all of this momentum and passion and interest. You know, all of these words that mm -hmm. really are defi definitions of up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, up in context. And say, I want this feeling, and that feeling not only propels you to get the results that you want, but it is kind of what you're hoping for by getting the On results. On the other side of the results. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I liked how you, you pointed out one context. You said, so for example, if you're talking about being passionate about something, that is you have a, uh, what, what a hobby or a, you have some kind of pastime, and if you feel motivated about it you feel passionate about it you feel that is being in the optimal state to go that direction yeah right? yeah and if you feel in a conversation with someone you feel engaged and you feel heard and you feel interested that's being in the optimal state in a conversation like yeah. like this is up and every, everyone <laughs> thinks that the thing will provide that it's yeah, a certain yeah, kind yeah. of relation or communication that they, will provide yeah, that if they say the right words or they nod their head just right then you'll get that feeling yes <laughs> that's the outside in approach <laughs> but you're saying you bring that feeling to the conversation and you're a much better communicator starting and keeping that feeling in the communication. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. So that's one part. That's a great segue into question number two. That's talking about a specific one specific lens of self acceptance, and the idea that you have to earn. Like if you if you're looking at your self image and you feel like you can only feel good about yourself or you can only feel good about what you're doing in life, if you hit a certain outcome. You have to earn it. Yeah. You if you if you're not hitting it, you can't feel good yet because you once you get it, then that's the that's the way to motivate you to get there is I won't feel good until I get it. That makes me keep working and then when I get it I can feel it. Yes. So <laughs> how does that contrast um, to what you were just describing? Okay, so describing that feeling of earning, I'll just say a typical day. Like at the end of the day, how do you feel about your day mm -hmm. and you think back? and you're looking for self-acceptance by your day. And you think back and a lot of people will have certain things that they need to, hi Sarah. Hey Sarah. <laughs> They'll have certain pe certain things they need to have done in order to feel self-acceptance mm -hmm. about their day. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, it's being productive. Okay, so do we check the productive yeah. box? And, yeah. and productive has certain criteria for it to be able to say, yes, this was productive. Yes, right. maybe, okay. maybe it's painting your nails and taking a bath. <laughs> Which we, we, we had a conversation <laughs> with someone who they wanted to be productive but they weren't feeling well and they're like okay how much energy do I have I'm gonna do something so their level of productivity for the day was it painting was, their nails and taking and they back. felt good about and it they're like yes <laughs> I have been productive today okay okay <laughs> so well, whatever it is for you it's unique to you uh -huh. and then also to realize that you're looking you're you're looking to feel that feeling from an external thing uh, How was my day? Yeah. Can if, I feel If you're doing accepted? it that way, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. This is the outside in approach. Yes. Okay, but up is where you bring, you start your day feeling that way. And what happens is you'll probably get 10 times more done and feel like you didn't do as much because you enjoyed the whole process and it felt like play. And at the end of the day, then it's not this, ooh, am I good enough do to I feel, accept uh -huh. myself today? It, instead, you start out with that acceptance. Uh -huh. And you use it as a power source to motivate you to get all kinds of things done. Yeah. And honestly, at the end of the day, you don't feel like you worked hard because you are, you have to kind of go, oh my gosh, I got 10 times more done, uh -huh. but it didn't feel like it. So yeah, and, and here's the point Stacy was saying, if, if, you were, if your lens about self-acceptance, about I have to earn it, it was, I, I mean, 
I'm guessing you, you can clarify with, with Stacy on a private message or whatever if this is your question. But the idea was by not feeling good until you earn it, it was as a way to propel you to do something. Like it was to try to get you to do something, right? But if you, if you look at the results when you feel bad, when you feel unmotivated, when you, any of the down mm -hmm. emotions in context. Yeah, not accepting yourself. Not accepting yourself. If you look at your actual performance, if you looked at the hard data for your performance and you look at your performance when you're up and you say, you know what? The best way for me to earn something is to be in that optimal state. Up is the best way to earn it. So <laughs> yeah. instead of holding out and saying, I can't feel up until I earn it, say up is the way to earn it. Yeah. Start with up. If you start really want to earn it, start with <laughs> up. That's a different lens. Starting with up as a lens because that's the way to get the behavior, the outcome, the productivity, the communication, the yeah. wh whatever it is you're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. being in the optimal state is the best way to earn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're using earn in a different way than maybe they're used to. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but maybe I like that. Best, I like that best way, Yeah, well, I'm trying to use it a different way. I know. Because the way they've been using it, <laughs> it means they have to be down. Yeah, it does. So if you're thinking of earn as in don't feel good until, yeah. Think of earn as in feel good so you can. Yeah, feel good so you can. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a different way. You s it's starting with the, the, the end goal in mind, but actually starting with the end goal feeling. Because that, that is the that's real the end goal. the real end goal. But it's also the best means. Yes. It's the best path. It's the best. So, yeah. Yes. So, and I'm sure you have experienced yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. You, I'm sure you can look back and say, oh, yeah, here's where I got the most... Oh, that's tricky though, because if your way to assess your results had to do with how much better it made you feel, the outside-in approach, thinking, oh well, you know, like that. I was just thinking how how your your perspective on past performance, if you were thinking whether or not you earned it or not, that it would be skewed by that lens. So mm. so Matt, that maybe looking backwards isn't the most. Maybe start from today and say, let me try. Yeah. Let's start from today. Let me try with a different perspective. If I have the perspective that this is the best way to get the results, the best way to behave in the way that could earn something, compare that to when you do it the other way. Yeah. Because looking backward, it, yeah, you, it's going to be a skewed perspective because you're, 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 if you're looking through a current lens yeah. and you want to try a new one, then you have to test out the new one. Which is another question. Do we have time? Where are we at? Okay. Okay, great, great. So great. let's... Do you want to talk some more about that yeah. one? Or do you want to talk this one? This one. Okay. So then, <laughs> if that's a completely new idea, if, like, this sounds, you know, this sounds intriguing, this is different, this is new, how does a person take a brand new perspective, like, completely different perspective, and try it out. What is the process for doing that? Yes, yes. I love this question. It, it's so powerful. And actually, we, if yes, uh, last week's live, we talked a lot about going to the edge of the cliff. Mm -hmm. That's and, right, the stomping grounds. Yeah, the stomping grounds <laughs> and all of that, that kind of thing where there is a transition between the two lenses that feels like you might have to fall or just go into the unknown. It mm -hmm. definitely feels like you have to go into the unknown. But to realize that when you come out on the other side, it's so much better. Mm -hmm. And so just realizing in, that when you go from one lens to another, there's an area of uncertainty, kind of like going through a mist of darkness, a kind of a fog and where you don't know, you don't know yet what it's like to use the new lens. Like, like the question was like, mm -hmm. how do you use a new lens you've yeah. never used I, before? You have this perspective and you're saying, try to have a completely different perspective. Mm -hmm. How do you... Yeah. yeah. How do you bridge that how gap? How do you bridge that gap? How do you, how do you turn your perspective to something different? And one real one realization is to, to see I'm going to be a different person on the other side. So that mm -hmm. person will be different than the one right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, the how is 
very okay so I love the language learning analogy and I've kind of mentioned this in different spots but if you can imagine how confusing going to a foreign country is and only hearing that foreign language and not knowing a word of it how capable would you be of communicating in that language and it's kind of like that like I want to say something and have you understand but I've never done it before and so okay, that okay. process mm -hmm. of learning how to say the words and at first the words will sound like your current language mm -hmm. like you're going to use mm -hmm. a very bad accent to, <laughs> like to pronounce yeah. the new just at first because it has to be this is something i connected is it has to be somewhat familiar to take that first step yeah you have to link it to something you already right. know right oh what about can you okay so link it with to something you already know so even if you're trying a completely new lens if you link it even in contrast yes like it's different, it's different than what I know by this way. You're, you're linking it by contrast, so that's number one. Number two that I heard from you just now was uh, when you're like when you're learning a foreign language, taking that initial initiative to say something to someone in the foreign language when you you don't you don't <laughs> when they turn around and go oh you and you're like <laughs> yes. oh no. <laughs> When you're trying it out for the first time, they're gonna say stuff back to you you don't you understand. Don't and, and when you're, oh, excuse me, when when you're trying a new lens, there there are gonna be aspects of it you that are in the fog. You don't you don't know exactly how it's all gonna look. Yeah. <laughs> so number two is to to kind of have a have a a welcoming perspective to that uncertainty. Yes. Right. Yes, a welcoming trying. perspective to that uncertainty. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anything else? Um. So then realizing. Okay. I've said this not very well in the past, and I okay. want to just try again. We'll give another is, chance here. Okay, <laughs> and that is that of mastery is just learning a new skill. It seems like it's this nebulous mm -hmm. thing because it's linked to our emotions, and we're using emotions as our guide our, to understand where we are mm -hmm. on our of mastery. Emotions seem to be like this magical thing that we don't understand, and so when we're saying learn of mastery, it's actual skills, skill progress, like mm -hmm. learning a new skill, learning to use the, to, to learn a new language, learning to play the piano. It's the same thing. It's not something um, magical, mystical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even, it's not even something that just stays in theory. It's actual stuff you can practice. Okay. And so um, to kind of get it out of that, I don't understand it doesn't uh, make yes. sense but to to just the reason it doesn't make sense is because hey monica hey ah! monica <laughs> no worries um, you're right on time yes <laughs> fashionably on time <laughs> awesome yeah so that yeah do you know okay. what I'm trying yes to say? i yeah I, I got it this is what i heard and maybe you guys heard something else so if you did just chime in but so uh you're saying that one of the ways to try a completely different lens is to not think of it as an unknown thing, something that can't be known. It's a mystery, but yeah. it's a skill. And when you first try changing your perspective or trying on a different lens, it's it's like when you first pick up a brand new skill of any yeah, kind, Yeah, think right? about sitting down at the piano. The very first time. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what am I doing? Yeah, how, how yeah. mystical would it seem for you to make that kind of m glorious music you've heard? Yeah. It would it would almost seem that way, right? Yeah. Kind of magical. Like, how do I make these yeah. make that sound? Like, for me as a kid, reading I thought was some kind of magical ability. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first thing is, if if it feels like a magical ability, like this unknown thing, it's because it's a skill that needs to be practiced and learned. Yeah. So, let's see. What were the three things we've covered so far? The first one... Um, what was the first one? Okay, so we talked about how... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That's what you're here for. <laughs> I know, I'm supposed to keep in track of this stuff. Okay, do the second one then. Um, okay. So, <laughs> I feel like I'm on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's work backwards. Yes. So it's a skill. It's something that you can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncertainty is... Being welcoming have a perspective yeah. that's welcoming to the uncertainty part of it mm -hmm. right and then what was the first one well we can go back and think this mm. the language learning analogy the skill the the <laughs> <laughs> i won't be able to summarize so 
when you hit the rewind, you'll be able to see what her first one was. But it was probably good too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do it right now. Nope. I thought it was, it wasn't. Oh, I'm overshortening an allergy. Too much pressure. <laughs> We've had quite a week. We've been on camera. Oh my a gosh, lot this yeah. Week. So we mentioned at the beginning we've been filming. It's, yeah, we've had a lot of camera time. And, uh, and this is the end of the, we've, well, anyway, it's been an interesting week. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we're not as prepared today. Oh, wait, you have it in your notes. Question number one. No, but oh, this, these are the three points one. of how to change the lens. Oh, and I didn't write. Fine, guys. You don't need to. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I hear a voice. It says it's fine. We're good. <laughs> this is us being real with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have any other things, thank you so much for everyone. Who... Yeah. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your support. And thanks everyone again for your feedback on which video. Oh, we didn't tell them which one we're going to use. Do you want to announce it now? We're going to do a hybrid. hybrid. Yeah, the hybrid is the winner. <laughs> and that also worked best with which parts of the, the message. Um, our creative director wanted to include so all together it's gonna to be the hybrid we really appreciated the comments that since there were so many positive on both sides and so many people recommended the hybrid that's what they went with yep. so thank you yes thank you guys and uh, thanks for joining us yeah thanks for joining us today and we will see you next week bye bye